So you and I met about 10 years ago. I was in Baltimore. I pulled up on you. I think we was at a chicken wing spot. I don't know. It was some real hood. <laughs> I, a gas station or something. I was like, Mo really is hood. She really is about that life. And we instantly clicked. And then you came and you did the uh, show supporting um, Whitney. And then you came back again when I did it with Tank and performed. And then you just yep. disappeared. I mean, I lost contact. And it's interesting because of what I've been through with abandonment and stuff like that. I always internalize it like, what did I do? What did I do? And I don't remember us ever falling out. But then I later learned through your interview with Charlemagne and them about the opioid um, uh, addiction and your abusive relationship with Carl. And so were yeah. you going through something at the time where you just disappeared from people? Or, um, did you become isolated because of the relationship? What was it that made you disappear? I think it was a lot of things. And I, I never, like, I'm a person that's just like, you know what? I'll just fall back. I don't want to be a bother to nobody. I, I just don't want to be in the way. I became a recluse. I separated myself not only from you, my friend, but from my family. I even separated myself from my daughters at one point because I was just like, oh, I'm making so many mistakes. I don't want them to become this. You feel me? I'm marrying and I'm getting in relationships that are with all the wrong people. But I'm, I'm dealing with it because all I got to do is pop a perk, smoke some weed, drink some liquor. All I have to do is just, well, if this if this is how it's going to be the end all be all, I'm going to just do it and I'm going to go out with a bag. But even after seeing Whitney go out like that, because I mean, you were a lot more intimately close to the whole Whitney thing because of who your relationships are. Even with yeah. seeing how she went out, that didn't take that didn't like scare you to scare straight. Yeah, it actually scared me, but I was just like, oh, well, if this is how I'm going to die, this is how I'm going to die. So when you got with Carl, that was a whirlwind romance that I saw happening extremely fast. He was a boxer, I believe, out of Philly. Um, yeah. You guys linked up. Really sexy guy. Had the whole, you know, thugged out D'Angelo yeah. look with the braids. Then, of course, his penis hit the Internet because he put his nudes out there. Or at least somebody caught the news. So we saw the d and I understood maybe you were a little dramatized. I don't know what happened. Not at um, all. You weren't dramatized? Not at all. You just fell in love? No, it's just like, because I knew him for years prior to that. Like, I was always in Philly, so I knew, like, I knew so many people. But honestly, when I first started dealing with him, a lot of people were asking, why him? Like, Mo, are you kidding me? Like, you can have anybody, but I didn't see it that way. And honestly, he was there and available at a time. I was at a low point. I was going through my divorce and finalizing my relationship with my son's father, um, which is my second ex-husband. So it's almost like I felt, you know, like you feel like, well, they was loyal and went through that situation with me. So you get first dibs. I shouldn't have never did that. That's why I don't even do no free promo, promo about that relationship because so much of my faults and lack of tact and class and everything that could go wrong from 2012 up until 2019 did seven years of hell pure hell and i had to hide it and i knew that people that knew me could see it but a lot of people are so like well you know i didn't see it i didn't see it I didn't. I really I thought. If you go back and look at pictures, you'll be like, oh, bitch, you was high right here. Oh, bitch, you was tripping. You know how many people I was about to fight or pull up on or just always in some mess outside in the streets? I wasn't I wasn't living the life that I was preaching. So I'll sing a song forever or Superwoman or I Cry, but be riding around North Philly three o'clock in the morning, people getting killed all over the place. And I'm thinking I'm invincible because I'm looking for perks or I'm just like, looking to get away. I had been asked a question the other day, where did you hit rock bottom? Because people think rock bottom has to do with finances. No, sometimes rock bottom is when you mentally ain't there and you emotionally ain't available and you spiritually drained and you're physically just tired. And So what was your rock bottom? My rock bottom was when I realized that I had sold myself so thin that I got to the point where I was like, I should have just sold my soul a long time ago. Like I was going out like a sucker and I hit it so well, people didn't see. But when I was in that marriage boot camp house, Dr. Ish and Dr. V and the judge, they saw everything. So many things didn't get aired, but so many things 
I needed to be revealed because of course, you know, I know everybody that runs all the blogs and all that stuff. So people would send me stuff and I would be like, oh, okay, well that's just free promo for the show or for this, or maybe I should drop a song, but it was all kept. Like it wasn't no promo, like living well and acting like they're not in a relationship. So when I feel that, oh, if you're going to do that, then I'm going to start acting nutty. But then I thought like, no, I got these kids. So I started trying to deal with things like how many perks was I popping a day? When you get up to 30 milligrams, which is the blue pill, mix it with Adderall, mix it with alcohol. Like I was a walking freaking fiend. Wait, so do you feel like that relationship was a, his come up? Do you think you were his come up? A lot of people say that. I don't know because I don't know if anybody, like people would say, Mo, well, nobody knew this person before you. And I'm just like, well, I know who they are outside of trying to be who they're not. And it's just so sad. And I always tell them, I say, your biggest downfall, your biggest enemy is yourself. And I realized, stop trying to save people, Mo, save yourself. That's my problem is I always tried to save everybody. I don't know if you've seen some interviews I've done where I've place myself in people's situations trying to be like, no, 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 that person, they do that because I was there. But at the end of the day, they're going to go home and do them. And I'm going home and get my head dag on there, knock between the washing and dryer. My, so I learned to mind my business. So my rock bottom, and when I knew enough was enough, was when we came back from marriage boot camp, August 26, 2018. And we were supposed to have a family day, actually the 25th. On the 26th, we were supposed to have a family day. Cause my daughters had came down and my niece had came and my sons were already there living with me. And when he didn't show up to the family day, I was just like, yo, you ain't show up. And this, they got, like I recorded it on my phone and I had to play it to get my protection from abuse. Like he spit in my face. I know. I heard about that. Like when I had to play the audio, at court in Philly, the lady was like, just turn it off. Like, what did, what did you realize about yourself at the moment when you, he spit on you? Because I remember when you said that on, the, on another interview and I was just shocked. Like, I was shocked at, that somebody I know, like you being a really strong black woman, a mother who's very protective of her kids, would find herself in a situation like that. Um, and I think oftentimes people think that women... I, oftentimes I think that people think that when women find themselves in abusive relationships that they're weak and strong women find themselves there too. What 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 did you learn about yourself when that happened? If someone would do that to you, because that wasn't the first time. That was just the last straw. Like he's throwing hot drinks on me. It was like so many things that were happening. But I was just like, well, I could take it. Oh, well, I done been through enough. Like I felt that I just had the ride. But when my daughters was there and I remember him leaving out, like I have, I still have the audio. And my daughter was like, mommy, no. Cause I was like, I'm gonna kill this tonight. Cause even after that, like I didn't leave right then and there because people think you could just pick up and leave. But it was in March of 2019 when he told me, like just one day, just like, I will blow your head off and I will throw you over this balcony and I'll kill your dad. That's when I was just like, oh, now this, like, it just became too, like, who thinks like that? Who does that? Wow. And I'm not trying to do no whole smear campaign. I'm actually trying to help somebody heal because as soon as I started telling my story, people was like, Mo, I would never know. I was like, yeah, because I was tired of hiding. I was like, honestly... I had suicidal thoughts. I was just like, yo, I don't even want to be alive, but that's selfish because I have five children and this wouldn't be fair to them to grow up and no telling what type of system they would be in if I'm not around. Hmm. And I'm all they really know besides my parents and my sister and her family. Now it's just like, nah, I had to push through. And it was, it was hard. It was rough having to pick up and the life you know for years, you have to pick up and move and then still try to do shows in between and maintain relationships and friendships and try to sing through that in the studio and then go through the withdrawal saying, okay, my manager pulled me to the side was just like, go through your social media and delete everything off and start from scratch. And I was like, don't nobody feel like he said, do it because you think that was lit. That had you looking crazy. And that's where you went wrong. He was like, nobody would tell you because maybe they couldn't see, or maybe they were afraid to tell you because a lot of people don't want to say things because they don't want to risk a friendship. 
But at the end of the day, I would rather somebody tell me the truth and save my life than tell me a lie and I die in it.